everyone, and welcome to Weldon Witness, Bookworm, Film Geek, and Friend. And I never expected to do a second season on this, and you don't have to call it season two if you don't want to, but yeah, I'm going to be switching up the format a little bit. I said in my last um, episode that I was going to do it, but to, to make it so any new viewers can be sure, I used to do only books and movies as reviews, but this time I'm going to be doing um, a few video games alongside books and a TV show alongside movies every week. And to start off our first segment, I wanted to talk about why I don't play many video games anymore. I play some, but just really not that many compared to pretty much anyone else in the whole, in that's my age. So I, I think video games are like the best invention ever made. Just um they they are just they are really they're an invention that's like no other. I, re I wasn't alive when Pong was around. I think that whoever whoever was around when Pong was first made has to have um, white hair by now. But my point is um, the ability to um, to ch be able the ability to control one side and make the ball go a different way. I just the ability to actually do to actually control what's in front of the screen it must it must have been very revolutionary just as um touch screens and um motion tracking are right now just um just it's they're expensive and not just the games but the consoles um i was mostly into um into all these video games back when i first got my game boy advance um i remember it was a spongebob one and then I decided I wanted a Nintendo DS in 2008. Well, wow, it's been 10 years since my first DS already. Um, and then by the time the Nintendo 3DS came, and by the time I was through my second Xbox, and, and then the Wii was going out of business, I thought, this is kind of entrapment, or, or oh wait, entrapment means um, trying to get someone to trying to convince someone to do something bad like a telemarketer but my point is that um i didn't want to spend as much money because that was around the time where i was starting to read more all of a sudden and i realized that um that books i mean i realized that some some electronics are designed for the dump i remember in sixth grade i saw a documentary by annie leonard called the story of stuff it was a 20 minute um podcast on what happens when we throw out our stuff where it comes from and just the pollution it caused and i wasn't really into recycling or composting before i saw that video but afterwards i was walking around my playground just in shock and terror so and between you and me the 3ds looked too good to be true when I first saw it. It it seemed exactly similar to the Nintendo DS and just one that wouldn't play any more of my Game Boy Advance games and and I knew that eventually just they wouldn't be playing my Nintendo DS games either. So I so I got pretty fed up and that's why I why I haven't played many video games. But I played some, primarily ones on my computer. And um and there, I thought to myself um so, and I actually have an opinion, a very big opinion, on some of these games. I didn't resort to actually reviewing them on my website or TV shows, but and yet for season two I'm doing them, because I realized that for books and movies, I, I review about 40 a year. For video games and TV shows, I don't have to give myself that rule. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that every every reviewer who reviews video games and TV shows knows where I'm coming from. It's a lot more. It's a lot more hard work, and uh, there are playthroughs on YouTube and other video sites um, for for video games. So. So maybe you maybe you don't spend any money. However, remember what I said about Pong? That's the sort of video game where it's more fun to play than to watch. I feel like to really capture the magic of playing a video game, you have to you have to you have to actually play it, duh. And also, I have a very story mind rather than visual mind. Like the visuals being the visuals are very important. But I am, I don't really know much about Call of Duty, um, so forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but 
um, there have been probably 20, may maybe even more Call of Duty games, and they all seem the exact same. Just um, to see how many times you can be, cannot be reborn, and s go on multiplayer, see how many times um, you kill the other side. But I felt like there's no story to that. There's there's nothing to these people that were fighting. So if, so maybe like for an hour or even a week, um, doing these games can be fun. But afterward, I it seemed like I would grow tired of them and I between you and me I suck at Call of Duty it's it's way too hard I guess it one good thing is it it shows how easy someone can get shot but my point is that um, as a result I felt like I've had to limit my my choices if I ever wanted to review a video game properly but looking back I have gotten a little bit into video games again I, I got a Nintendo 3ds recently and so um and so yeah, for, for books I'm going to be reviewing one of the video games I got, and for now I think we might as I've got the point across. So we're going to take a small break and then I'll be back with all these books I've gotten with me. These are all books I got for Christmas and I can't wait to share them with you. Bye! <laughs> Hey you guys, I'm back. So now it's time to talk about the books I got for Christmas. And for the very first time on Weldon Witness, um, sorry, hopefully my laptop's not in the way. Um, these books are ones that I haven't read yet, except for this one, Outrage, where I've read the first two thirds of it. Um, yeah, it's for the very first time I'm going to be just um, sharing stuff with you before I even have an opinion of it. Well, I may have an opinion of the covers anyway. Um, people say not to judge a book by its cover. It's That can be hard for me to do. Um, and forgive me if um, forgive me if my improvisation might end up a little sloppy. It, to make sure it doesn't, I have some notes here. The first one I'm going to be talking about is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. This is a story about a boy who has been fasting, which basically, for those who don't know, it means not eating for days now. Um, and 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 food calls for him he but he just has to ignore it because the hungrier he gets the more empty his stomach hat is the more he realizes that he has these special powers and so he has to he has to, he and he has um desperation in life um he feels like the more powerful he is like the more right he can make things, the more fair things can be for himself. And I got interested in this synopsis right away because not only is it, well, it's obviously original. I've never heard of a book that's kind of like this, but I have I have two other reasons. Um, one is um, I watched a movie way back when called Chronicle. It was directed by Josh Trank, and who also directed the 2015 Fantastic Four. And it was about these three teenagers who ended up developing these superpowers like we don't exactly know the lore of these superpowers just that they're having a blast with it until their life gets in the way and their ability to cause mayhem or no not mayhem havoc is the right word just um it it feeds them into committing some very bad acts or one of them at, it ends up like that anyway and i felt like this sort of story had the potential and also i once tried fasting because i know that um that hundreds maybe thousands of people die every day f because they because they're hungry and because there's nothing for them to eat or drink and I decided to see if I could um, fast for 24 hours I made it to 20 and um, it wasn't too too hard I ended up taking a walk and just my stomach was a little crampy not too crampy but it but it was all right um, uh, to, I, I feel like Sam J Miller has the potential with this sort of story to have some very vivid and grotesque descriptions descriptions. So that's why I'm reading that one. The next one I have for you is the one I'm reading right now called Outrage by John Sanford and Michelle Cook. This is a sequel to um, their to the book Uncaged. It actually, come to think of it, each of the names in this trilogy have both seven letters and two syllables. It goes from Uncaged to Outrage to Rampage. Um, the the main antagonist of this series is a corporation called Singular, and they're trying to develop immortality. And to do that, they have to experiment on these live bodies of humans and animals. Um, the, uh, and this is kept a secret from the government. And 
in and then this animal rights activist named Odin ends up finding out about this and ends up breaking one of their dogs out named X and he realizes he has to try to expose this company because now that he knows what's happening um, and he and his outsider sister Shay they end up um, in on this together and end up going to this special hotel but with a man called Twist who owns a ton of um, who owns a hotel full of kids who um, you could say um, about half of them have probably robbed a bank but they're not sinister people they're they're really um, they're just really tough and they're able to take care of themselves twist basically has um, a place to stay for for people who are kicked out of their house or don't want to live with the, their guardians anymore and what I liked about this what I like about this series oh, I'm put saying it in the present tense is it doesn't really have anything slowing down its ideas um, in uncaged it's been two years since I read the first book and the thing I can remember the most is is about how Shay, Odin, Twist, and all of their friends were able to bypass the fence um, that surrounds the big Hollywood billboard, and they end up um, decorating it with Christmas lights to say a message, aka the name to a website. And when they put it up, they even put up these barriers so that the police can't get to them as fast. Um, and and they end up almost like snakes slithering every which way and trying their best to stay ahead of a big company that can deny anything and um and I found a connection to this because these days, um, and actually probably till the beginning of time, in a, law, in a law case, you have to make sure your evidence is 100% factual. People always say that they would rather um, let a bad guy get away than convict a good guy. And it can be very tough from my, lim pers my limited experience to have perfect evidence to convict someone. And, and yet Singular is after these people. They, they have millions of dollars, sort of like the L from the Michael Vay series and they're out to kill so I so I've been having a blast with these they also they also don't have any romance that gets in the way um, don't get me wrong I feel that there are some romances I've read in books that are as exciting as the end of the world but for this one um, it has the material to to be inventive and independent and exciting and it does the next I have is called Stealing Snow by Danielle Page. She's the author of the Dorothy Must Die series. And let me just say, the reason I was interested in this, apart from its gorgeous cover, it's one of the best covers I've ever seen. It's also um, it's also in 3D. Most of these covers um, have a 3D aspect to their front cover and that you can feel the bumps on this special mirror and a different sort of, um, a different sort of gloss to the glass. Um, but that the name of it um, sold me alone. Um, I think Danielle Page comes up with the best titles for her books, or her editor does anyway, like Dorothy Must Die, The Wicked Will Rise, Yellow Brick War, Stealing Snow. Like, every one of those names just, it they got me in instantly invested. Like, this is a well-advertised book. It's a retelling of the Snow Queen, from what I know. It's about a girl who has been locked up in a psychiatric ward, and um, and apparently several years ago, her boyfriend went out on a rampage, and um, she she ends up as part of some sort of prophecy. Um, there's not much I can tell you without spoiling it, and not much I know anyway, and it's funny, because any one of these books I could end up hating later, but... But yeah, um, Stealing Snow got me invested from the start, and now that I finally have a copy, I can't wait to read it. Um, the next I have is um, A Poison, Dark, and Drowning by Jessica Cluess, and this is its predecessor, A Shadow Bright and Burning. This is one of the best examples of a fantasy I think I've ever read. I recently uploaded my top 10 best and worst videos on YouTube for books, and A Shadow Bright and Burning was number five. Um, these are about... Um, about a fantasy world, it basically a contemporary fantasy world. Um, it's filled with creatures like um, a skinless monster named Arhelm. Um, like literally, um, his blood is um, like dripping alongside his muscles and yet not dripping on the ground. And you can see you can see them traveling through through the body for oxygen, and also um, one named Korazoth, um, a deity of darkness and fog, and um, and there are, there are ravens and um, eyeless beasts and. Um, 
and it ends up being there's a friendship romance that I loved from the beginning it was so innocent and brilliant and I didn't want anything to happen to these characters I thought it would be a ripoff of Avatar The Last Airbender because this series um, has sorcerers that manipulate you guessed it air earth fire and water um, but it turns out there's more to it. It talks about how there are sorcerers and magicians. Sorcerers can manipulate stuff and magicians can create stuff. And magicians are seen as more dangerous because of their unpredictability. And, um, and not only that, but um, the main character, Etta, is seen as a female sorcerer, um, a prophet, uh, like, just like in Stealing Snow and a lot of YA books. Only the thing is, she's the first female sorcerer to come along in 500 years. So there's mystery, conspiracy, and um, I sped through it and loved it, and getting a poison dark and drowning felt um, like an instant need. And what surprised me even more was... Um, I generally don't like training in books. I know that they have to be around, but um, but I've read um, quite a few where where that part's just taken the book right away from me. But for for this case, um, we start to grow on these teachers that help Henrietta, and they are, might be a bit annoying at first, but then they really grow to respect her, and we do too. Um, and the next one I have is um, Hillary Clinton's autobiography, What Happened. And I actually, I did a lot of notes for this, and I don't want to, I don't want to not say some of this stuff. So, ah, here we go. So, I read next to no nonfiction books. And I might have told you this before, but... Basically, the reason why is not because I don't like nonfiction, but because when I do a review, I review mainly its story, its writing, and its characters, and its excitement, really. And even though two of those I can critique, um, the other two, story and characters, I can't really because it's not the author's fault. Like they're they're telling a story that's they're telling a story that really happens, so I can't I can't comment. But but I decided, I looked at what happened, and I'm not the most inter well, actually, I'm very interested in politics, but by now, I'm just pretty fed up. Like, um, like let's see, um, after two years of controversy and division, or maybe even more, from the USA and the never-ending battle between Republicans and Democrats that has stained journalism, which is the course I'm in, and actually has affected me way over here in Canada because of how untrustworthy journalists are now, apparently, I still thought that this book would be worth my time because, well... I, I'm a Clinton supporter, but don't hate me automatically. I don't know everything she's done. I just supported her during her speeches. I, di I don't know everything she's ever done. I don't know every shop she's ever walked into. But whenever um, someone calls themselves a Trump supporter or a Clinton supporter or a Bernie Sanders supporter or a Roy Moore supporter, these days um, people paint you as, um, as like the twin of that person and especially highlights the bad things they apparently did. And and um, and so I just wanted to confirm that just um, just I supported Hillary Clinton, but that doesn't mean that I will support everything she's ever done. That's what a critic is for, really, in in books and movies and everything to to uh, to just give a synopsis and show the good and bad. But basically, um, we. I remember, I even remember when the election happened and so many people wanted to all of a sudden migrate to Canada. I was, I was very scared of the overpopulation, but my main point is, and I'll find, I finally got to the point, I read a few pages of this autobiography and um, I was really invested in it from the start. I think Hillary Clinton's um, very good with her words, so I'm, so I'm going to see how this plays out. I, I got it for 50% off and otherwise it would have been 40 bucks, so so I thought, I guess um, that's what a sale is for. When you're curious about something, you should maybe leap on it if you feel 100% sure that you're actually going to read it. And um, before we go, I, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the video game that, that I got for Christmas. Um, I got Pokemon Ultra Sun. And I gave up on Pokemon, really, after the change to the Nintendo 3DS, and I was upset about the TV show over something. I Well, it's not just something. I know what it is. But I'm for my, for my next show, I'm going to be talking about what I think of the Pokemon anime. Well, my lips touched the mic. Hopefully that didn't hurt. Um, 
And so it's been, well, Pokemon Ultra Sun has been very unconventional. It's just like Pokemon X in that it's a lot more 3D than, than before. Like you can see that, um, that so much effort was put into creating these 3D characters that run and these Pokemon that really move around and have expressions as they do their moves. Um, like I can't imagine how much, how much effort that took, especially considering that now there are 800 Pokemon. Um, and so far, I've liked how different it is. Um, instead of doing gym battles, you do trials. Um, and I don't know exactly how much there is. There are four islands, um, and yet I've done three and uh, so, trials so far, and I'm on my second island. So maybe there's eight. That that would make sense in the long run. But I've also heard that you get to keep the title of champion for a while. That was something I, re I really liked, too. And I've had fun meeting all of these new Pokemon. Um, over the years, I've realized that... Um, Whenever I get another one of these games, I want to try to be different. Way back in Pokemon Fire Red in 2004, <clears throat> I decided to do an experiment and put my starter Pokemon in the PC and only train Pokemon that I had captured afterwards to have a very different team with completely 100% unpredictable health. And, um, and ever since, I've decided that every time I'm going to start a new game, I'm going to try to... Um, to train Pokemon that I've never trained before, so so that I can have a memory with each of them, you know. And um, and I, I like all of its different things, including its Mantine surfing. It's um, let me think, the fact that you get to pet your Pokemon and get and give them special snacks and groom them after battles. I can get that some people might be a little bit um, impatient with an aspect like that, but I personally like it. Okay, so. Um, after the break, I'm going to be discussing movies also in a very different format than usual. See you then. Hey, and welcome back. So, n and now it's time to talk about movies. And as I said, this is going to be in a different format than I've ever done. So, in t but reading books are different than watching movies when you're doing your top 10 best and top 10 worst of the year. The way it always happens for booktubers, um, you they always read whatever they find on the shelf. And for 2017, like they put it on whichever list if it was good or bad enough. For movies, it's a bit different. They're obviously more popular and not as and a nine dollar movie ticket is not as expensive as a twenty four dollar hardcover book. But my point is, the way all every movie reviewer does it, they always um, watch movies that came out that year, and only those movies are in their top ten best and worst. And maybe it might be a stretch to say only because movie most movie critics don't watch um, watch movies on that are older than the than the year that they're currently living in so anyway I had watched about 40 movies this year and read about 50 books but for movies I'm gonna be talking to you about some of the movies that I missed out on this year I already have my top 10 and best and worst planned but um, these are ones that I haven't seen and kind of wish I did for either purpose now I'm sort of um, I'm sort of putting these on the ones I expected it to be bad and the ones I expected it to be good based on the prior reviews and I'm kind of ashamed to do that because there are several books I I mean, actually, yeah, there are several books and movies that have gotten negative reviews and I've and I've actually l liked even loved and vice versa. But just um, I guess just um, I'm putting these on there because it might e it might be a safe bet because most critics didn't like them. I don't know. Sue me. And if I end up watching them and liking them or hating them good so the bad looking ones that i missed are suburbicon the snowman flatliners and the dark tower and so suburbicon um looks like actually i'm pretty sure it's a murder mystery starring matt damon and directed by george clooney and um between you and me um i like george clooney just as much as any other actor but he's the director behind the monuments men and that was one of the worst movies i think i've ever had to sit through uh, it was a war movie about Greek collecting p paintings and um, it and it, it was about as dull as an empty frame and apparently um, Suburbicon um, 
uh, is a movie that, according to critics, tries to tries to have a retro look and may succeed at that, but has no idea what to do with its murder mystery and has dull characters and um, and just suspects that don't really have any flavor to them. Um, and uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is um, the Flatliners so far. And actually, the Snowman looked looked pretty similar. Um, it w the Snowman w is apparently about some sort of killer, but it just it didn't look like a really engaging horror tale. It um, it didn't have a very a scary enough atmosphere. And I'm not saying that horror movies have to have an have a special red bloodied um, fleshy atmosphere to be scary. Just um, it, it, I don't know. It seemed like um, it seemed like a murder mystery with without anything that I really that I really go to the movies to watch. Flatliners looked looked great. It looked like um, a movie about what happens when you die. I mean, count me in. When I was 13, I wrote a book called Afterlife. Looking back on it, it's very childish, but it but it was about the afterlife and it didn't have anything religious in it. I was too young to really to really get that. But I, but I don't know. Um, I've always been interested in life after death. Like, haven't you? So, uh, like, that's that's basically what caused religion in the first place. So, um, y so you never know. Um, it just, um, it looked just uh, apparently, um, apparently it's also a remake of an original starring Kiefer Sutherland, and he's also taking part in this movie too. Apparently, a lot of people found it, found it boring and a lack of scares, so I don't know. And um, The Dark Tower is a Stephen King adaptation, and I saw it this year. Um, like, it really exceeded my expectations, and um, I found out that it takes place with these characters as their kids and as their adults, and I like the fact that they stick with it, it, how it was as they were kids, and so that not only can there be a proper sequel, but that that it wouldn't have to jump to back and forth and and just um, underdo both of their stories. Um, I feel like um, I feel like switching to only when they were kids um, helped the tension. It helped um, it helped make these characters seem more vulnerable too, because they're not going to have gun licenses and um, and if they tell tell if they tell adults, they might they're probably not going to be believed. It's the oldest trick in the book, but it works for it. Um, just uh, the Dark Tower. Just um, it looked. It had a great poster, rem albeit similar to Doctor Strange. But uh, I just lost interest in it quickly. It's kind of hard to really. It's kind of hard to really talk about movies like these when you you've pretty much forgotten about them, and then talking about why you didn't watch them earlier in the year. I wish there was more to say. Just um. It uh, oh, but I have it written down. It it also it sort of looked like it was just made because the because the novel was so popular. It looks to me a little bit like a cash grab, a little bit. Um, and here are some of the good-looking ones. There's the Disaster Artist, uh, Thor Ragnarok, uh, Blade Runner two zero four nine or two thousand forty nine, and an inconvenient sequel. So, I haven't seen the room. Apparently, it had a budget of six million dollars and grossed um, less than the amount of money I made during my summer job, less than two thousand dollars. And apparently, the Disaster Artist is a story about Tommy Wiseau and his pal Greg about how they how they had dreams of being fa very famous with this movie about how Tommy saved up the money to make this sort of film it's it's a story about how it grew to be wh what people are saying as the greatest bad movie ever made and as someone who's been a YouTuber and as someone who has seen people try stuff and fail at it, um, I know that a story like that can turn into the best ever. Stories about failure can end up a big success. And I heard that not that Tommy Wiseau didn't do much after The Room and that he was a very strange, interesting man. Um, like, let me think. Um, oh, uh, there's an embarrassing thing about him. I shouldn't say it on the show. It's nothing offensive, but... Let's just say um, whenever someone does something that's perfectly natural, he'll go into a baby gorilla fit and um, and just force them force them off the stage or the house um, for doing something ev everyone does. Um, and um, so 
I, and I heard that The Disaster Artist was a great film and that James Franco was an uncanny Tommy Wiseau. Um, I remember um, when Charlie's Theron or Theron played um, Eileen Warnos, the serial killer in the 2003 or oh, 2004 film Monster? Like, I think it was released December 2003. Um, like, Charlie Theron had to gain like 15 pounds and she it was what won her her first oscar she was uncanny as the troubled woman and i've what i've seen of in the trailers of james franco it seems like a very devoted performance and a very unusual one too um tommy wiseau talks like oh hi mark like it talks about like a bad rendition of my bentley voice says bentley the turtle from, from sly cooper which is another uh, video game series i'm going to be talking about later um I, I can't wait to see it. Um, next is Thor Ragnarok. Now, I have a bit of a tale for this. Um, back when the, the Avengers came out, I didn't really have an interest to see it. I wasn't into superhero movies much. Well, like, I, I don't even remember what I was into mostly. I, I don't remember watching many movies as a kid for some reason, or any of the, or any of the movies I watch today. But then I was dragged to see The Avengers. I loved it instantaneously. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before, except maybe the 2007 and 2009 Transformers in movies. And, um, and um, it, it was released in 2012, as I said, and the first Thor movie was released in 2011. And before I knew it, Thor The Dark World came out, and now Thor Ragnarok, I, I haven't been as interested. I've, I've been late to the party, and there have been so many other films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, like, and after watching Avengers Age of Ultron, which I found very disappointing because it was too cluttered and I ended up yawning, I don't know, just um, the, the Thor movies are, I'm not the most interested in, but maybe I should be because they do look terrific, and Thor Ragnarok has some of the best reviews of any Marvel Cinematic Universe movie in quite some time, and um, I heard that Thor Ragnarok was a very funny movie, so... So you never know. I might decide to hop on the bandwagon b right before Avengers Infinity War. Um, and the next is Blade Runner 2049. Um, like, I'm sorry, I, I don't have much to say about this. Um, other than that, other than that, it looks great. It looks like a companion to Star Wars. Oh, not just that Harrison Ford's in it, but because the it looks gorgeous. Um, it's just I I haven't seen the original Blade Runner and. Um, and if you ask me, I didn't see much advertising for Blade Runner 2049. So it seemed like the sort of movie that I might have already seen. It seemed like I was more interested in movies I knew more about. And that can be kind of bad when uh, when a theater might cram um, something down your throat or a YouTube ad can cram something down your throat so much that you have to see it. That's a cynical way of advertising, but maybe necessary way of advertising these days, if you ask me. So... So I might give 2049 a chance, but after one of the critics I really respect gave it his number one spot of the entire year. The next movie I'm going to be talking about is An Inconvenient Sequel. Um, back in 2006, um, uh, the presidential nominee Al Gore had released a documentary called An Inconvenient Truth. Um, and it was before I saw the story of stuff, and I was seven years old, so there's no way I saw it. But... Um, but I remember Roger Ebert's um, synopsis on Rotten Tomatoes uh, uh, that I read over. He said, in my 39 years of reviewing, he's re he started reviewing in 1967, um, I have never said this before, but here goes. You owe it to yourself to see this film. And if you don't, you'll have to tell your grandkids why you chose not to. That, that's humongous praise. That's praise that any that any movie critic or any presidential nominee dreams of. And he, he even ended the review by saying, um, after I saw the movie, I did something strange when I got home. I turned off all the lights. And, um, and you know, between you and me, Roger Ebert um, even, it was an amazing critic. I even still go to some of his reviews, not just because they're entertaining to read or they're very insightful, but because they are very well worded. I can end, I can end up with quite a few new words for my book after I read one of his reviews. But my point is, um, I saw the trailer for An Inconvenient Truth, um, and I've seen some clips of An Inconvenient Truth about how the snow has been disappearing and how and how apparently um apparently in a few years the 911 memorial would be would be in the water 
because apparently that was one of the most controversial things he said and he he got proof that um uh, he no he didn't get proof he got footage of the memorial being drowning in water so i thought I thought that's a perfect way to say I told you so. It's the perfect way to show the three percent of scientists and the whatever percent of the population that climate change is real and that the and that the problem is denying it and not doing anything about it and that we're basically burying ourselves in clutter and trying to disguise the fact by burying the trash somewhere else in some remote community. So. Um, I actually was going to talk about Annie Leonard here, but then I talked about the Nintendo 3DS and I couldn't help but, but help it. But basically now I'm a, I'm an environmentalist. Um, shamefully, I still throw stuff out in the garbage, but everyone does that. Um, and I feel like, um, I feel like, uh, in politics, um, yeah, anyone can pin the blame for anything on anyone, and anyone can say, "What about what you did when you were 16?" What I'm not, I'm not doing any references. What about um, what you said before you apologized? Um, because apparently some reviewers have said that um, that Al Gore is a big liar and that um, and that stuff he's done is unforgettable and that we should let someone else go in. But I, but even though I've never seen an inconvenient truth, just some clips. The fact that Al Gore wants to take care of the environment, it's and be, and do movies like this. I feel that it's very notable of him. It's noble of him, and I and I wish I'd seen it. I I sometimes I wish I could. I've seen I see more documentaries. They they can be underrated, like not not that i not that i think every documentary is underrated like like i i can't i don't i don't know what um what a good example is like i don't want to watch a documentary on fingerprints maybe about how paper was made how paper being put onto ink um and about this and about the science that went by to create them it could be interesting in fact if if i was up to the task like i could if i had the information i could turn it into a story that could be as exciting as a hunger games but my point is um i wish i'd seen an inconvenient sequel so I guess that that's it for this for this week. And next week, I, I'm not sure what I'll be talking about. Maybe I'll go out and get more books with this gift card I got for for my for my for Christmas. I'll definitely have finished Outrage by then, and maybe one other book. I don't know which one. Maybe I'll maybe I'll toss a coin twice to see which one of these four books I read afterward. And after that, um, after that, I'll talk about Pokemon. I'll talk about. Um, let's see. I haven't picked a. I haven't picked what I'm going to be doing for movies yet. Um, it's always fun to really to really do a little bit. It's really it's. <laughs> I I stutter way too much sometimes when I get ahead of myself, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself for now, and I'm going to let myself take a small break and um, and work on all the stuff I need to for school. So um, thanks again for watching, and I hope you have um, a great week. And for those at Durham College and UOIT, um, good luck with any final project you might have. And um, like everyone knows knows that everyone knows that everyone in this in the hallways has a story to tell and is going through something in their papers so yep good luck and i'll see you next week